um, this third session of the day uh, is a panel which was proposed by Tokomomo Turkey Interiors. Um, or should I only say interior? I don't know. Um, this, the, because of the, the introduction of the panel, I wanted to take the opportunity to say that uh, we will be organizing panels as uh, 40, uh, in, in 40 symposiums uh, in the future. So we would like to invite, uh, of course, uh, in, um, them in thematic congruity with our uh, call for papers, but we should always keep, uh, we, our members should keep in mind uh, of organizing panels both, uh, um, you know, uh, for symposiums and independently uh, of symposiums, we are open uh, to organizing uh, such panels. Uh, and uh, if you if you have such ideas, you'd like to um, organize such events, uh, please contact us uh, via our email address, and uh, we'll be happy to to organize something together um, as forty. So um, I don't know if our, all our uh, panelists are here. I see Zeynep, uh, Umut, and uh, Gülis Hocalar uh, in front of me. Hello, Zeynep. Hello, uh, Adam. Well, I think wait a little longer um, and see if we can start in a couple of uh, couple of minutes. But this is, a, I think, this is a great opportunity to welcome uh, Dokomomo TR Interior to um, to Forty. And those who are not our members, we'd like to invite them to become members of Forty as well. Let me advertise for Forty. <laughs> um, is Okay, Dennis is here. Okay, so uh, welcome, Dennis. I think your microphone is off. Hello again. There was okay. a slight problem with my connection, so sorry. Uh, I was a few minutes late. Well, uh, all, all, all these team. all these are expected. <laughs> So no problem. They're expected. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this is the first time we're running an online symposium, so please bear with us if you have any problems. And I think there are all sorts of uh, surprises that can come our way while we're doing this because the quality of the internet is, is it can be fluctuating throughout the day. So I hope uh, all our guests uh, can understand and, and tolerate uh, such problems. So um, again, we'd like to welcome Dokomomo TR Interior uh, 240, and um, I'd leave the floor to our moderator, Dennis Sasserje, uh, who's coming from Israel. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hello, I'm Dennis Sasserje from Izmir University of Economics, and I would like to thank the 40 Symposium organizers for such a great program and for letting us arrange this panel within the larger structure of the symposium. As a group, we believe in the power of networks and collaboration, and we thought that it would be fruitful attempt to bring groups who are contributing to the history of Turkish design together for this reason. Here, of course, with a focus on the modern movement, interiors, and hygiene. Undoubtedly, as individual members of Dokomo Turkey Interior, we have taken part in several previous 40 symposia. However, our wish today is to be present here as a group. As uh, Zeynep Tunoltav and Umut Shumno, our, our first presenters, will explain, following our contact with the co-chairs of Dokomomo ISCID, the International Specialist Committee, the wonderful Susana Boros and Barbara uh, Coutinho, uh, who might be here with us right now. If so, hello to them. <laughs> They invited us to uh, the Learning from Modern Movement Interiors in Times of Pandemic session they organized within Dokomomo 2020. And representing the group with a paper, as I was preparing and collecting ideas, several strong concepts on modern hygienic interiors appeared from the group, which led to various interesting directions that we believe should be car carried further. 
Uh, we, some of us were also partly within the discussion on the, of the uh, theme of 4T, which is commonalities with that session as well. Thus, the fact that we are here is through these several connections, which have gained even more significance during the distancing effects of the pandemic. So we find it very valuable. So thank you again. I would swiftly like to give the word to uh, uh, our presenters, Zainab Tuna from Yeshaw University, who will introduce our group and our works. And then we will follow with three great papers and a question and discussion at the end uh, that is moderated by Evan al Thank you. Uh, hello, good afternoon again. Uh, I also would like to thank all the organizers for tea. Uh, and thank you, Denis Ojam, for this nice introduction, for your moderation. Uh, at the beginning of this panel, as Denis uh, Ojam introduced, we first would like to introduce our committee. Uh, Dokomomo are uh, referring to, as you know, documentation and conservation of buildings, uh, sites and neighborhoods of the modern movement, initiated in 1988. Um, but despite Dokomomo's great recognition, its committees are less known. Um, there are six international um, specialist committees uh, which work under the supervision of the Common International. And IEC Interior Design is one of those specialist committees, as you will see. And we are proud to say that Denis Asurcu, uh, one of the founders of the Common Interior Design Committee in Turkey, is one of the members of the International Committee. Uh, the IEC interior design focuses on interior design, an issue of major relevance for the modern movement and modern living. Uh, interior design gives us important spatial, ideological and aesthetic information necessary for a full awareness and experiencing of modernity. Uh, the modern movement consider interior design as being in close relation with architecture and the other arts. And the modern interior's identity is characterized by a strong and coherent style, which results from a unity between architecture, furniture design, decorative arts, utilitarian objects, equipment, textiles, and light. And Dokomomo Turkey, which has been active since 2002, also initiated the founding of similar committees in Turkey in 2019. Uh, in order to comprehend the modern movement and to develop a holistic and more inclusive perspective uh, on uh, the spatial, ideological, and aesthetic aspects of modern living culture, uh, there is a great need for work on interior spaces. And based on this need, uh, we believe, uh, the Modern Interior Committee was established in 2019 by the initiation of my colleagues, uh, Denis Asırcı and Umut Şumlu and me, uh, and uh, with the supervision of Elvan Altan uh, under the Komomo Turkey Working Group uh, in order to expand the work done on discussing, documenting and preserving the modern heritage in Turkey by focusing on the scale of uh, the interior. And uh, here you see uh, the 16 members of this committee. Um, the Modern Interiors Committee follows the main objectives of the Komomo organization and aims to establish the relationship of modern interior spaces uh, with the contemporary context. Uh, and uh, coming to our activities, uh, with our, within our action plan, uh, we have the organization of biennial symposium on modern interiors in Turkey. And the first one was organized at Özyen University in 2020 by the leadership of Pınar, says Pinar, one of our committee members. And the second one is planned to be organized at Yashar University in 2022, and call for papers will be announced soon. Uh, and um, also the traditional annual poster presentations of the Komomo Turkey group is adapted to the scope of modern interiors and are realized uh, biennially uh, within Modern Interior Spaces Symposia. In 2019 and 22, uh, there have been two poster presentation sessions, including several posters on modern interiors. Uh, and this year, uh, the Komomo Turkey Working Group planned an event series in which the problems observed in the previous year, uh, 2020, uh, are evaluated from the perspective of the scientific committee's expertise based on the issues that stood out um, in the previous year on the preservation of modern architectural heritage. Uh, so one of these events with the title Adaptive Reuse and Modern Interiors 
uh, was organized by our committee moderated by Deniz Avcı Hosanlı and Ebru Karabağ. Uh, we also participated in Dokumu 2020 uh, 2020 symposium open discussion, uh, which was organized on modern movement interiors in times of pandemic by the Dokumu International Specialist Committee on Interior Design. And Din Sasurcu represented the committee by her presentation. Uh, and as a committee, uh, we were asked to make an interior design proposal for the historical building at Chubuk Dam, Atatürk's house, uh, built in the second half of 1930s. Uh, the proposal only included the mayor's room, and it was an honor for our committee to be consulted for the redesign of an historical interior in Turkey. And in our studies, um, we also attach great importance to the joint projects we do with different people and groups. Uh, for example, Osan Dadelan carried out the three-dimensional modeling of uh, modeling work of Muammer Karaja House, designed by architect Peran uh, Doanje, belonging to Muammer Karaja, uh, one of the leading actors. And this modeling work offers the opportunity to experience this recently demolished house. And the photograph, the image you see on the right, um, is the product of another joint project. Perim Bayram um, made the physical model of the entrance lobby and mezzanine floor of Chinar Hotel, located in Istanbul, and uh, designed by Rana Azıpçı, uh, Ahmet Akın, and Emin Artam in 1958. Uh, thanks to this model, uh, made on the text and thesis written on the hotel, published photographs and movie scenes, uh, we had the chance to re-understand, produce, and share this building, which is a significant uh, place in terms of modern interiors in Turkey. And we are very active on social media also. You see our Instagram and Twitter accounts. Uh, by the help of the visibility potentials of social media, we hope to enlarge the awareness about modern interiors in Turkey, not only nationwide, but also internationally. Uh, and I'd like to stop here. We will be happy to answer your questions as the committee. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Hojam, uh, for your presentation. Uh, and many thanks to our presenters today who turned uh, the ideas that we mentioned in the very beginning into three great research papers that focus on hygiene and the modern interior in the specific case of the Kuzulay building in the Architect Journal and in Turkish cinema. Our time will be 20 minutes each, and the questions and discussion at the end will be uh, moderated as, uh, by Evan Alton, as we have mentioned. Now, the first paper from Body to Mind, uh, An Urban History of Kuzulay Building, Ankara, is by Gülis Tashdemir from Baş Başkent University. With a focus on modern interiors and hygiene, Tashdemir will speak about the significance of the Kuzulay building in Ankara in the urban formation and it's being a context for social contributions to daily life between 1929 and 1979. She's gone so far as to drawing the original building interiors from partial images and documents, a great archivist. Without further ado, the floor is yours, Hojam. Thank you, Professor Hasirji. I'm going to share my screen. Um, can you share, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you and uh, I want to uh, welcome you all. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here with you today. Uh, the agenda, as, a, as you can see, that I will present you today is From Body to Mind, an urban history of Kızılay building. My goal of this presentation is to investigate with you the background on Kızılay building as a special role of representation in many aspects. Kızılay building itself and its place in Ankara's urban formation is so important for its own era. It was located at Ankara's newly planned urban spine and this modern representation shows itself through a monumental structure. Regardless of this structural representation physically, the modern interiors had a role to flex for any governmental oriented issue. Between the years of 1929 and 1979, the building has a memory that has served the city, bodies and minds with various contributions. Some roles of Kuzula Institution taking shape inside this building were conferences on health issues, campaigns of awareness of hygiene, 
gender-based roles, which were about caring, youth educational issues, child care, and many others. In this sense, the subject I will discuss and focus on the specific interiors, which has been feeding everyday and urban life within the new modern ideological structuring since the proclamation of the Republic. Therefore, my research is based on investigating the transformative process. And yet to say, it is inevitable that hasn't been completed. Uh, Ankara defines as an ideo ideological structure and empowered representation center that had been created a new model of the way, way of life, management, and special structuring for Turkey. The model of Ankara as the heart of the nation has hosted a pioneering movement that, made, that to many other scales. In this notion, development of the urban scale had been conducted with the idea of designing, structuring, and the spreading of new lifestyles throughout the country. In that gradual thought, the way of living initiates the public realm and the public urban life. One must be involved in the, into that realm from private to public, especially the women who uses the urban interior of the political sphere as a female figure who can finally go out of her home and walk onto the boulevard. Um, from that aspect, because live building is at the heart of the site and the defined axis, this photographs view from um, Guvan Park, we can see because live building at the left, we have also a view from uh, Soysal apartment in the right. The year of the photograph should be 1940s. Uh, the aim was to create a new city center in the south of Ulus, the city's current city center. All of the public buildings and open spaces, starting with Guvan Park and ending with the parliament building, were named by uh, Janssen as a uh, governmental zone. What was tried in the planning strategy was to create uh, monumental typologies within the public realm while integrating and uh, improving them within the usage of the green spaces. Thus, the uh, green spaces and gathering areas and public spaces uh, come to the fore in the generative of the ideal city. And all the Ankara's inhabitants, they all had been witness to um, all the traces and transformation processes. What I meant here is the transformative effect of structure that creates, destroys, and always presents the traces to its users, likewise to our agenda today. Uh, these traces reveal the agreement and reconciliation of the subjects who made history in the past with the current time period. For Marshall Berman, the notion of boulevard states that by hosting anonymous crowds, it defines new individualities. You can see the relationship of the building uh, on the site with the boulevard and boulevard axis through the urban description. As for our case, it all starts with 19th century. Official papers claim that the society had got named Hilal Ahmer, whose naming rights were registered in 1907. It took place as one of the early 19th century initiatives of Ottoman Empire. On the October 29th, 20, 1923, in the first general assembly after the proclamation of the Republic, the name of Hilal Ahmer Cemiyeti was changed to Turkey Hilal Ahmer Cemiyeti. The head commissioner was Dr. Tevfik Salam, who was we all know from the war with tuberculosis. In the parallel era, Turkish Aviation Association and Turkish Society for Protection of Children were founded within Atatürk's initiatives. Atatürk gave a speech with the parliament that, I wish the number of members to reach an appropriate level with the social development of the country and the whole country would ensure this conformity. Architect Robert Orley was invited to be assigned as the architect of the sanitary buildings in Ankara between 1927, I'm sorry, 1928 and 1933. Orly, a new actor in Ankara's public construction, uh, was about the design Numunya Hospital and uh, our case, and also Refik Saidam Institute. Orly also assisted Herman Janssen in the realization of the Ankara zoning plan either, so that in the Janssen's plan, we can see the exact location of this uh, building. When mentioning boulevard, Kızılay building had a characteristic that behaved like an urban interior. 
the character was defined by one of my interviewers uh, that there was this Kuzulay building, a beautiful building. In front of this building, it was wide and empty. There were two small and rounded pools in it. Let me tell you the diameters of the pools, as far as I can remember now, they were around six meters in a diameter. They're also uh, side by side, but one of, uh, one of the pools had sand in it and the other had water in it, but the sand and the water were at the same level. They took up very little space, but there was water. In front of the park was there, uh, Guvan Park within all of its glorious view. That depicts us today that intensification of the social quality had played an active role for all inhabitants within all ages, such as the ages, the archive materials and micro stories remembrance were triggered through specialties and lead traces. This building gave its name to the park as well, which was located at the intersection of Atatürk Boulevard and the Agyokart Street in the early years of the Republic and opened towards to large square later known as Hürriyet, afterward Kızılay Square. It is stated in many sources that it had been uh, used intensively starting after the building was completed at 1929. Even earlier, Hovuzbaşı Park was associated with this very area as a background relation. Emre Madran was structurally analyzed the building in terms of the scale and modernity that the building is an, is an indication of a certain modern style in terms of architecture with verticality. According to Injasanoğlu, the facade of the building, which was the interface that establishes a relationship with the city that interpreted as the signature of the architect with its characteristic balustrade and door interventions, into the photograph from the document, we can see blood donors in front of the specific door and frontal interface of urban. In that ceremony, there was a speech took place by a governmental authority that he said, we accept that physical education is an important element of holistic health, as we believe that it covers all of the individuals and races, especially in children, we express our view as a complete being without dividing it into body, head and spirit. Likewise, the building was structurally and analogically acts as whole. The facade of the building has a dominant symmetrical governmental order, order as of early period characteristic. On the other hand, the facade with vertical axial elements that contains seven axes of apertures. Each openings had rectangular shaped wooden blinds. The, re the retracted entrance, entrance of facade incorporates the users into the space with a windshield. The building had had a heaped roof and contained a meeting zone with an octagonal floor area associated with the rear facade connected to the main load. There were used three main loads. The octagonal meeting zone was accessible into the ground and third floors. Here we see a draft ground plan, plan drawing scaled on the one hand, but uh, open to correction for any reasons. This draft material was produced by myself by digging out some materials and documents I have sought out. Now we are at the ground floor, the most photographed and well-documented room ever. The interior had been serving as a representative of the commission and governmental authority itself. When we look at the special components, the inner facade elements were dark oak panels running all of the space. There was a wide and long meeting table that gathers everyone in the building uh, to the frontal position. As we can see from the photographs, the building had a constant daylight controlling issue. It had been also served the uh, head chief of the commission. We can tell for the interior served as an executive office within multi-purpose. The visibility and speciality from the authority was so distinctive way to interconnect the citizens through the uh, photograph. The photograph creates a dialogue for a minute for its viewer that a, a very interesting base as a uh, setting. That room was interface of the venue of diplomacy without sociopolitical uh, social discourse, because the Light Commission highlighted and declared seven basic principles at each meeting, uh, which we can track them all from their commission reports. These were humanitarianism, equality, neutrality, independence, aiding, character, unity, and universality. 
Turkish woman profile uh, proposal included a Western woman, its existence in public and political uh, sphere, uh, its primary, uh, and it, it can be said that uh, its primary goals. However, within the discourses of women in the Kızılay Committee, we can talk about uh, any existence in the commission field until the uh, date of 1980s. All for all, some of the courses opened by uh, the Turkish Kızılay in the field of medical social health, education and services are planned as um, first aid basic training courses, first aid uh, teaching courses, health volunteering courses, compassion volunteering courses, household caring, uh, mother, child and adolescents uh, health courses either. In 19, 1958, a relationship was established with the British Red Cross and first aid trainings were started. Here we had that the training of the trainer uh, situation. Women had some roles related with remedially, educationally and maternity. Uh, in addition to all these duties, nursing is paired and represented with a feminine figure who is not a decision maker, but a practitioner, unlike the masculine figure in the commission. Now we are at this zone for uh, donation. Here we have in contrast with press room by using white walls. So hygienic and sterilized interior as far as we can see. On the same uh, vertical axis zones, there were spaces uh, is about, uh, are about health and public gatherings. Now we are again at ground floor again, uh, but the space had changed. The octagonal meeting area had blank uh, angled walls that aimed to get focus on to the main speaker. However, vaulted inner niche have been identified the speakers don't clear clearly. Horizontality impressed the octagonal form of the space. The column heads were seeking references and addresses as to uh, Anatolian architecture in an historic base, but within a modernized way. Uh, one of my female interviewer mentions this area that uh, there were public conferences in the Kızılay building on Saturdays. When I left my apartment, I would go. I was more concerned with Rasim Adasal's psychology and pedagogical approaches, youth raising children, the problem of children hygiene and sustaining hygiene conditions. They were very good at conferences. I used to go to them a lot. As my interviewer said, all in all, the society were gathered in multiple ways, but it had only one purpose, that, the, that was the public good. From now on, we are passing to the upper floor relations that was the marble stair rail zone on the building. As an entrance level in the primary sense, it's a dark place. I examined the commission's uh, board's archive that um, uh, the stair rails location of the building was so exactly described. As of the ground floor, the right block zone with more public content while the left block offers institutional usage mostly. In the 1960s, the association had the hospital laboratories and the nursing college in Yenisheir, Ankara. Especially nursing college graduates receive a bachelor's degree and uh, assigned to different parts of the country for compulsory service. Public relations were one of the most emphasized agendas. Uh, at 1973, source introduces us to um, some courses, some educational courses, uh, teacher's education course, as you can see. The small volumes of interiors serve in a similar style with um, tight seating around the meeting tables. Multinational dining organizations as a, a representation, as a representation team for new specialty. This supper was for the Kızılay Commission's annual establishment anniversary. This photo shoot was from 1970. The interior were with a partition seating layout, inner facade design had vaulted niche as the same, um, same language of the meeting space. Reconciliation with the facade still continues. Um, well, we understood from the closed curtains. The horizontality and the material usage repeats that uh, in a contrast. 
From body to mind, caring across generations, the main thing is to provide physically conditioned stability for all of the ages. Experts were invited over and over. All kinds of education for physical health were pioneered. Uh, the photograph place was the upper, up, upper floor meeting area. We may see a different uh, seating in style. The General Commission's private meetings were held there constantly. Uh, the skylight invites daylight into the building effortlessly while reminding the ceiling level with a monumental scale. From that view, we can see a stacking zone after the seating area. In the niches, um, there were photographs of the uh, head commissioners according to the years. We can say that the main components that create specialty uh, are the large niche from the middle axis. The ceiling level of the space is striking when you look at the figure's height with uh, a cramped seating arrangement. All in all, uh, against all this meaningful and efficient use of the building, the building was demolished. From the exterior, we have uh, lost the park initially. In 1976, the park in front of the building was demolished and turned into a car, car park. Uh, likewise, all the uh, squares and parks would be tested by this uh, fact. There are also reasons for this, such as the loss of width of the pedestrian walkways over the years and the approval of the uh, love on floor heights either. Afterward, the aging on the walls onto the front facade draws attention together with some graffiti. From the inner, we uh, see documentation um, have been disappeared until uh, 1982. This was um, our modern history that I could say. It was our modern heritage. For the Conservation Board's archives and building identification, it only showed of a sign of moisture uh, was checked at the report. The building, uh, like all the buildings built before uh, 1930, was registered as a historical monument. However, an instant decision was made by the authorities. Emre Madran was an actor as a reporter at High Council. He stated that the decision of the demolition process was realized in a very short time. Although the building was demolished, its trace still stands on urban, giving its name uh, to the square today. A competition announcement was made in 1980. The heading was Kızılay Rant Tesisleri uh, Mimari Projeşmesi, and different scale would replace the building as a conclusion. There is a lot to say, but I will end with an interviewer's uh, quotation. We were deeply saddened when the building was destroyed. The competition was open. In its place, new building was built. Our friends who did it. It was an Ankara symbol. It was a breeding point on a certain scale, a history, a culture. When you look at the old photographs, it got a tremendous response. Walks, meetings were held, but what a cure. It didn't affect. It was destroyed and overnight. I will end up here. Thank you for listening and sharing. Uh, for extended questions or comments will be uh, pleased later. Thank you so much, Gunistash uh, Demish. That was a fascinating presentation and wonderful material. And I, we know that there's so much more as well. I'm very curious about uh, your archive, but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, I'd like to invite our second speaker, Sina uh, Mustuk. Our second paper is titled Reading the Hygiene Discourse on Housing in Architect Journal. 1930 till 1950, uh, and it's by Selim Sartar Ostuk uh, from Başkent University. Ostuk will speak about hygienic interiors in modern Turkish housing and relations to social life between 1930 and 50, building the discussion upon the wonderful resource that is Architect Journal, an open online archive. Our presenter has searched for definitions of hygiene in the broader sense, as well as hygienic spaces within the home interior and what it means to be modern, rational, and healthy. Looking forward to your perspectives on this, uh, Hojam, whenever you're ready. Uh, thank you, Hojam. Uh, thank you, Dennis Hojam. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, 
As a member of uh, Dokomoma Turkey Interior Committee, uh, today I will share uh, with you my research uh, titled Reading the Hygiene Discourse on Housing in Architect Journal 1930-1950. I should add that the relevant uh, part of this ongoing project uh, research project developed within the scope of the 40th symp uh, symposium. Uh, paral uh, parallel to, um, sorry, <laughs> to the symposium uh, text and the uh, panel title of our session, my research aims to discuss the hygiene discourse on housing in architect journal. Uh, the time span of the study is limited between the 30s when the Republic was institutionalized and the changing and transforming uh, political economy of the 50s. Based on the idea that the agenda in the architect journal was also the agenda of the architectural environment of the period, this study tries to understand the relationship uh, uh, transformation of the hygiene discourse through the relationship between the advertisements uh, in the magazine, the residential wet space plan schemes, and in relation with critical uh, articles between the years 1930 to 1950. Um, in this study, the word uh, hygienic uh, as the uh, equivalent uh, of the word hygiene in, uh, was searched uh, in the database of architect journal. Among the, uh, among the uh, 611 alt, uh, articles uh, which are specific to housing and hygiene were selected and grouped. Uh, the I'm sample... so sorry, Freedom Hojam. I'm so sorry to um, interrupt. Oh, oh. We can't see your screen if you're sharing. Oh. Are you sharing oh, your oh, screen? Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> okay. Excuse me. So sorry to interrupt. Oh. Uh, so we haven't seen anything. If you want to go back. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Beginning. Will... There we go. <laughs> Something's coming. Thank you. Um, yes, and you, you if see? you can make it full screen. Yes, okay. yes. Can you That's see? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. Then. Uh, um, I will skip these parts. Um, uh, parallel to the symposium text uh, and the parallel title of our session, my research aims to discuss the hygiene discourse on housing in architect journal. The time span of the study is limited between the 30s when the Republic was institutionalized and the changing and transforming political economy of the 50s. Based on the idea that the agenda in the architect magazine was also the agenda of the architectural environment of the period, this study tries to understand the transformation of the hygiene discourse through the relationship between the advertisements in the journal and the residential wet space plan schemes and in relation with critical articles between the years 1930 to 1950. Um, in this study, uh, the word hygiene as the equivalent uh, of the word uh, in was uh, uh, search in the uh, database of architect journal. Among the uh, 611 uh, alt, uh, articles uh, which are specific to housing and hygiene were selected and grouped. The sentence or paragraph in which the word sahi or hygiene is used in each uh, theme is included in the table. Uh, today, uh, I will share three of them. These are uh, hygiene as a projection of life, hygiene as a product of bodily practices, and hygiene as a way of critical thinking. 15 projects with a hygiene emphasis show the trace of transformation in terms of space scheme and wet space relationship. Semis Sayan emphasized one single family being functional, hygienic, and comfortable is stated. Ahmed Ihsan shows attention to elevator, hot and cold water installations, and the signs of material culture that was used in uh, his project. Mimar Zühtü is in search of minimal and hygienic reflections through his discourse. Behçet Sabri, um, um, makes a comment on structural system of building and electricity, water, and hygienic installation in this project is applied. Public and private special organization in this project is supported with the use of staircase, which is a member of his modernist, mon, uh, modernist discourse. Sedataka emphasis emphasizes the topological uh, advantages of the site and explains how the reference 
to the street organized the spatial organization. Architect Tahir Turan modulates the living units for middle class family living and is proud with his project for having a modern plan scheme and having a balcony throughout the entrance facet, facade. Architect Zeki Sayar also emphasized land reference and relation with panoramic view in his project. All of the facades have sunny views from outside and orientation through sun directions implies hygiene. With his onwards mansion project in Bosphorus is a modernist attempt. In his project, uh, architect Abidin Mortaj emphasized on the idea of cooperation, special variations for different types of families. Material culture and association with dominant uh, uh, so, uh, suppliers of material is also visible uh, through his project. In his project, architect Abidin Mortaj emphasized on the idea of cooperation, special variations for types of families. And um, material culture and association with uh, suppliers of material is also visible uh, through his project. Uh, in Istanbul municipality apartment, mixed use of commercial spaces and housing within the scope of uh, 1950s changing uh, economical policies. There is repetitions of living units and the idea of core. In the projects of Baysal Birsal, Birkan apartment answers the special representation and taste of the period. The wet spaces are related with maid's room who works as a domestic manager. Hygiene is a product of bodily practices. Kirkor, Daniel Yan, Vehbi Kocan partners, Nazmi Balkanoğlu and Mohamed Tunç, uh, Parunakyan, are leading installation firms of the period. Contribution of uh, non-Muslim societies should be considered. Uh, Vireloy and Bo uh, is special for interiority. Mizan scene and representations of the firm is embodied through the advertisements. Each of them have different hygienic discourse via materiality. Coach family becomes more visible through 1930s. Is that by Sal and Fenka also accompanies? Hygiene as a way of critical thinking. Beginning of the 1930s, in his architect uh, article, architect Majarol Sami and architect Abidin both emphasized the role of the architect. With a sarcastic twist, he adds that containers must be physical, hygienic, and economical. Mimar Abdullah Sia aggrandizes the modern architecture as a genuine and add that economic, hygienic, and constructional needs must be considered. Vedat Tek um, address to his argument that shows the unhygienic, dark, and stuffy conditions. Class emphasis is visible. Both architects Zeki Sela and Ahmed Ihsan make a comment on lack of comfort and hygienic conditions of low class citizens or civil servants and workers' dwellings. Urbanist architect Burhan Arif and architect Shahabettin and architect Ami emphasized the role of gardens the model developed by Howard's project, Garden, Garden Cities of Tomorrow. There is a massive critique of in-situ architectural practicing by Zik Sayar. Sayar also adds the need for support on agriculture-centered living. There is also conflict between tradition and modernization dilemma. Zik Sayar underlines the negative aspects of polarization between living culture, hygienic, and social legislation. At the end of the 1930s, nationalism in housing discourse becomes visible. Zarif Ergün for his projects on modern uh, 
Turkish housing. Interiority issue is named through furnishings and living conditions by Sedat Eldem. Democracy is also named against religious thoughts. Affordable housing uh, comes together often with the term hygiene. Family structure and its different variations on living is supported by social uh, special uh, concerns by in the essay of Ernst Reuter. He goes further by adding saying, single families and children are hygienic and correct. Wilhelm Schütte correlates hygienic residences with a healthy mind and healthy body. Nahid Uysal points that master architects work in Europe and uh, United States. Architect Naja Eldam underlines the resistance of geographical conditions and local taste and tradition. Adoption of two is crucial for him. Renowned architect Gerard Kessler show attention to housing problem in post-war period and want us believe and dream on Istanbul. In dream of Istanbul, where thousands of hem, uh, happy fam, uh, people live in, live in hygienic dwellings, residing in small houses with private gardens, their children pray happily uh, on the big uh, playground in the new districts. <clears throat> Zeki Sayar adds that housing problems should be taught in a nation level. There is a massive voice on right to live in hygienic dwellings. There is class-oriented residential areas for him. Sayar, as a consistent critic, underlines the inability to prevent the development of secretary settlements and show attention to more housing policies. Uh, within the changing and transforming scope of the 1950s, economical policies uh, there is different governments against a healthy housing policy. All hygienic, social, and even aesthetic issues are left to the municipalities. Zixayal also implies that urgent housing policy, determination of minimum housing norms for our uh, country. Following Engas housing question, the idea uh, of a home for all or as it has been stated in the 60s for the greatest number, number addresses architecture practice at a political level, becoming to be understood as a uh, determinant uh, social factor. With a new twist, modern homes brought to the debate teams, uh, uh, terms of public and private life, intimacy, exposure, and gender. The house seen from the cell, the module, the system, and expanded across the city constituted uh, the fundamental issue debated within the architecture of the modern movement. CM discussion uh, forums triggered uh, profound consequences, both in the organization of family house units and uh, of the multi-family housing blocks. The theory of the minimal house based on the uh, existence minimum concept was present not only in model, uh, models for social housing, but also in the bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie house program. It was Gideon uh, who in 1929 wrote about modern forms of housing showing the house magic for formula for the future, light, air, and openness while launching in the same year the uh, term of CM2, minimum housing. <clears throat> as an ongoing uh, research, this study attempts to look hygiene as more political issue. Hygiene is a word to represent issues on material, culture, class, gender, taste of different uh, periods. Consistent criticism of Zeke Sayar in architect journal should be emphasized for his articles on uh, different aspects of housing problems as crucial as the impact of architect journal. The agenda in architect journal might be directly seen as the agenda of the architectural environment of the period. Invisibility of Turkish women architects as a critical voice, only Wilhelm Schütte, should be also considered. Interior representations are stronger as visual uh, representations than critical writings. The middle class is more visible, although there is a strong emphasis on the spatial rights of the different classes. 
and above all, uh, through his mat uh, this material, working class housing issue might be seen as hygienic problem itself. Architect is a critical voice of the period, and I am glad all the names in this journal who cares the architectural environment. Thank you. Thank you, Hojam, so much. Uh, you've covered a great deal of material, and I think you know it's very open to uh, much interpretation. And uh, as you've mentioned, I think this is an ongoing project, and we're looking forward to what else will come up uh, from this. And we'll discuss more in the question and answer part. So our uh, third and last paper, last but not least, of course, uh, the portrayal of Karen Yeshilcham, Heybeliada, Kirazlıyayla, and Süreyya Pasha sanatorium buildings is by Deniz Avcı Hosanlı from Kadiras University. Avcı Hosanlı will present her work on Turkish films and the portrayal of care facilities in Yeshivcham cinema with a focus on three particular sanatorium interiors that often house tragic stories that we have watched and experienced in films throughout the years. A very interesting paper. The floor is yours, Hojam. Uh, thank you, Denis Hojam, for this uh, kind introduction. I will be sharing my screen now. Uh, can you see the full screen mode? No, we see the, uh, yes, now we can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, hello all, uh, I am part of the Dokumama Turkey Interior uh, Committee. And today I will be presenting a research titled The Portrayal of Care in Yeşilçam. And I will be looking at Heybeliada, Kirazlıyayla and Süreyya Paşa's Notorium buildings. I will start with a brief introduction focusing on tuberculosis, its portrayal in Yeşilçam, along with the portrayal of the cure and the portrayal of the treatment along with the institutions. In the second part, I will focus on the historical background of the institutions as the selected cases. And in the third part, the main part, I will be fo uh, focusing on the characteristics of sanatorium architecture and consequently of modernist architecture as sanatorium movement affected modernist architecture and how we can experience them uh, by simply analyzing Yishucha movies from the 1950s to the 1970s. Uh, after a brief introductory information about the disease, I will be talking about the portrayal of the disease, uh, the cure, and uh, the sanatoriums. The tuberculosis bacillus was first detected by the physician Robert Koch in 1882, and its causative agent was named as Microbacterium tuberculosis, or basically as Koch's basal. Tuberculosis was called white lead, white plague in the Western world, and thin disease, relapse, weakness, and smoke in Turkey. And it was the diseases, of course, closely linked to the rapid industrialization and an undernourished urban working class that lived in unsanitary conditions. And the first harmless vaccine capable of inoculation and protection against the disease was introduced in Paris in 1923 by French scientist Calmet, who named it as ECG. After the establishment of the Turkish Republic, the new state gave extensive efforts to fight contagious diseases. Because according to the new Turkish government, being a healthy nation meant eliminating the reminiscence of the past and reaching a healthy, sound, robust, and logical thinking, happy, homogeneous nation within the compassionate and healing hands of the Republican state. The disease was depicted in the arts, literature, and media of almost every nation. And in Yeşilçam, of course, Turkey's main moving picture industry during the 20th century, the disease has also been one of the subjects, and especially in the form of melodrama. The sickness was portrayed within the scope of deadly aesthetics, and the cause of the sickness was usually demonstrated as a melancholic consequence of heartbreaks, lost loves and losing of faith and hope rather than contextualizing it within the living conditions of the poor working class population. However, sometimes this melancholy portrayal was consolidated by a poor protagonist who lived in unsanitary conditions. The portrayal uh, of the disease is very similarly approached in uh, a variety of Yeshucham movies. For example, in the last composition from 1955, the uh, protagonist is an aestheticized young woman who lives in poor, unsanitary conditions, but her condition gets worse because she's lovelorn. 
In Saw from 1965, once again, the character is aestheticized young woman, but this time she lives in sanitary conditions, but it's implied that she was motherless, thus undernourished from an early age. But of course, her condition gets worse because she's a loved one. In the movie, The Empty Frame from 1969, this time the protagonist is an aestheticized young man. He is rich, but he still suffers from a childhood sickness because he, uh, his condition gets worse because firstly, he works in soft conditions in his father's factory and the field. But of course, he gets even worse because he, uh, he is lovelorn and he walks under the rain from midnight uh, to the morning. Uh, in the movie, The White Roses, this time, once again, the character is an aestheticized young woman, um, but she is rich and she gets sick on the road from uh, during a frenzy escape while they're escaping from their families in feuds to be together. In the movies, coughing and resultingly spitting blood became an expression of rapid failure of health and therefore suggested a fatal ending with an inability to heal. And the characters and the scenes which portray them in bed are almost always aestheticized, uh, we can say almost like uh, paintings. When we look at the portrayal of the cure, in the movie, the last composition from 1955, the address of the cure is given as the Hibilada Sanatorium. And there, the convalescent patients are portrayed in constant bed rest and occasionally attending communal activities, such as concerts, which we will discuss. In the movie Saw, the cure is offered at the open terrace of a private sea villa uh, where the patient lies in a reclining chair under the sun. In short, we can say that she receives a very private heliotherapy sun treatment and the silent cure often offered at the sanatoria. In the movie The Empty Frame, once again, the address of the cure is given as the Hibilada Sanatorium, where the protagonist, after overhearing the doctors talking about his fatal end, leaves the institution in a rush. Perhaps one of the most interesting movies about the portrayal of the disease and the cure is The White Roses, because perhaps uh, as part of the social propaganda, here the doctor clearly defines the cure program as a nutritious diet of honey, milk, and butter, and he suggests that they go to a region filled with pine trees. But now they are living in the Eastern Anatolian region, and uh, the female protagonist asks from her lover for a single pine tree to be brought to her, as she refuses to go back to Istanbul, scared of their separation by their families in feud. But in the end, of course, the male protagonist delivers, but the uprooted and replanted tree dies, and so does she. We know that the sanatoriums are specialized facilities established from the mid 19th to the mid 20th century. And when we look at the portrayal of the sanatoriums in the movies, we see that the patients are kept isolated from society to control certain contagious diseases such as tuberculosis. And the treatment methods of these sicknesses coincided with the rise of modernism, which aimed to create a hygienic lifestyle within the socialist agenda. And from all these movies, the viewers can easily follow the architectural and the special characteristics of these establishments. And in this presentation, to support this argument, I will solely use screenshots from the movies. And the movies are selected from the 1950s to the mid 1970s. In the second part, I will talk about the historical background of the institutions uh, as selected cases, Heybilada, Süreyya Pasha, and Kirazlıyayla sanatoriums. The first case is the Heybilada Sanatorium. So the association with tuberculosis and Heybilada dates back to the pre-Republican period. The Naval Music School there was reused as the military school during the First World War. However, due to the spread of tuberculosis among the immigrants, it was transferred to the immigrant administration. In 1924, the Ministry of Health and Social Affairs of the new state decided to use it as a sanatorium, and Dr. Tefik Ismail Gökçe received the building from the immigrant administration, and it started fully functioning in 1924 as a 16-bed facility. In 1926, two balconies were added for outdoor cure and technological technical innovations occurred in 1929 when Dr. Zühtü Erman came to the institution as an X-ray specialist. Haimil, one of the leading construction companies established in 1936, 
uh, undertook the construction of the new additional buildings there. And in 1946, the women's quarter, also known as the Dr. Tevfik Ismail Gökçe Pavilion, was built designed by the collaboration of architect Rabbi Gorbun and Heimel Construction Firm. At the end of 1954, the number of beds had increased to 630 beds in total. However, with the change in the health policies, the budget of the sanatorium was reduced in 1980. And in 2005, the sanatorium with its patients, employees, and medical equipment was tra uh, transferred to Surya Pasha Chest and Cardiovascular Diseases Hospital. And the reason for that uh, was given as the limited number of patients and the difficulty of transportation by the sea. The sanatorium building was damaged in October 2009. The second case is the Surya Pasha Sanatorium. So in 1950, it was established within a small building in Narladere Farm, donated by Adalet and Surya Inman, Surya Inman being one of the esteemed politicians, soldier and philanthropist. In 1951, a small building, recently known as Block D, the surgery building, was built and put into service with 20 beds. It started as a sanatorium for tuberculosis. However, the small health facility soon became a larger institution in 1961, so patients without tuberculosis were also admitted in time. A new block A uh, with 330 beds was built in 1957, and the, in the image in the films, we see that building. And in 1976, two new blocks, recently known as B and C, were added to the complex, increasing the number of beds to 1,600 beds. In 2005, uh, Heybeliada Chest Diseases Hospital joined Surya Pasha Hospital and in May 2006 saw that the Baykos Children's Hospital. Today, the most of the buildings at the site are demolished and the site is in ruins. Uh, unfortunately, one of the newer structures standing there. And the third case is the Kirazliyayla Sanatorium at Mount Uluda in Bursa, and it's one of the most important structures in the intersecting careers of Emin Onat and Leman Tonsu. Uh, and it was designed in 1945 and applied in 1946. The building complex was operated by WorkBank until its transfer to the Bursa Uluda University Medical Faculty Chest Diseases Clinic in 1979. And in many movies, it is recommended for patients who suffer from chest, lung, and heart diseases. Meanwhile, Mount Uluda had become the heart of the winter leisure activity of skiing. And thus the facility was uh, reused as the Uluda Kirazlı Hotel from 1983 to 1994, and it was closed in 2000. Meanwhile, in 1989, a restoration project was carried out by Nuray and Atilla Adai. And after its closure in 2000, in 2015, another restoration project was carried out by Birar Kurutay Mimar. In the main part of this presentation, I will be talking about the experiencing the characteristics of sanatorium design and of modernist architecture always implied via the archives of Yeshilcham. The first characteristic of the sanatorium design, uh, and as can be observed from the movies, can be defined as being the other of the urban. So the sanatorium movement wanted to show that the patients can be returned to health and potency with bed rest, exposure to sunlight and fresh air and controlled diets. And most importantly, it was suggested that the cure is most effective by the separation of the patients from the urban life, which encompassed unhygienic uh, living conditions. As we can see, all sanatoriums displayed non-urban qualities. They were located at destinations of mountainous regions or pine forests provided, and they provided a seclusion from the city life like a monastery would. All cases we see that they display purity of forms as they have a very elementary geometry and the lines of the geometric shapes are quite precise and the purity of the surfaces, the corners and the edges are quite discernible. This is so because of the practicality in design and the exploitation of the new construction techniques and materials, mostly of concrete and steel, uh, which were found suitable for the center lifestyle, being simplistically easy to clean without any ornaments. And the walls of these pure forms are whitewashed, usually whitewashed concrete with occasional sheets of glass introducing to the interiors the beliefs of the modernist agenda, sunlight, fresh air, hygiene, health, and a massive amount of openness. 
The glass nature of the sanatorium buildings within the concrete skeleton also supports the purity of forms and reveal the interiors to the viewers outside and vice versa. So we can say that both ways, nothing is concealed. So from the outside to quote ovary, it's almost like looking at the internal organs of the human body in an X-ray. In the movies, the creative aspects of sunlight and fresh air are prominently featured. And this is established by displaying the scenes of sanatorium terraces, balconies, and open gardens to demonstrate the powers of heliotherapy, the sun treatment, and the silent cure. And to achieve heliotherapy, the sun treatment, distinctive architectural features such as balconies and terraces became the common vocabulary of the modern movement. So the large terraces, the balconies circumscribing the entire blocks were also not alien to the mounted timber chalet architecture of Europe and rural architecture of Anatolia, which included a revac, a traditional building element in the form of portico in the upper floors. So this is especially highlighted in the Kirazli Ayla Sanatorium, which has the simple monumentality of the second national architectural movement. And to quote Colomina in 2019, she compares the balconies of these structures to the ribs in an X-ray, which is the primary diagnostic tool for tuberculosis. Sanatorium movements also established an awareness of the body, as can be observed from the movies as well, by focusing on the posture and the actively engaging in fundamental physical activities, such as walking. And after walking, the treatment is always supported by resting next to a body of water, or under the pine trees within the complexes. And heliotherapy rest was advised as a daily two hour rest, usually between two to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And the cure is called cure the silence where the patients were forbidden to talk but whisper and the rest in the terraces or in the gardens in reclining chairs. When the viewers are taken from the exteriors to the interiors, they witness one of the prominent uh, characteristics of sanatorium architecture, and of course of modernist architecture always implied, is the long austere corridors. So here it's impossible not to quote Foucault, uh, because this occurs as a result of the services which should be disciplined by the state. The cells, roles, and connections are organized in an architectural, functional, and hierarchical patterns, uh, and for dispersing the sick, separating them from the others, compartmentalizing the hospital space becomes necessary. And this provides the control of circulation and consequently guaranteeing the obedience of the individuals with the management of time and movement. These corridors provide fast and easy circulation, which are easy to clean. And the only elements occupying these corridors are the clocks, always reminding of the time management and staff in constant movement. So rest or idly standing can never part, be part of these spaces. Even if someone is waiting, uh, one has to walk up and down the corridor and not simply stand in these corridors as demonstrated in the movies as well. And in the movies, the viewers observe that the convalescent patients are taken care of with two approaches. One of them is the individual care and the other is the social exercise. To talk about the individual care first, the provision of individual healing occurs in private or privately shared rooms. The single room, the fundamental of medical and especially psychiatric architecture, is multiplied and arranged repetitively along a corridor and this is a layout to collect the patients under one roof while isolating them from one another. The rooms we can see have large windows, however, direct sunlight is cut off with curtains or the roofing structures of the terraces acting as bristolate sunbreakers. Thus, the sunlight provided is a very comfortable one. And the patients' rooms, as they line along long corridors, they also line along these long balconies which are designed for outdoor bed rest, and they are often directly accessed from the rooms. For the communal part of the healing, the sanatorium aim to establish uh, and help patients resume their place in social life. Thus rehabilitation of the patients uh, occur with entertainment, communal activities, and the healing sessions. 
For example, in the movie, The Last Composition, Zeki Miran gives concerts to the patients and staff of the Heibelada Sanatorium without knowing that his lost love is actually staying there. So the sanatorium regime offers group rehabilitation and partial solitude as the cure. And another aspect of the sanatorium movements which influenced the modernist architecture is the cleanliness and being easy to clean. The machine-like details and materials provide the full potential of being easy to clean by the elimination of the excessive in design and having smooth, shiny qualities of materials such as tubular steel. And as central as sun, light, air, and openness, water was one of the prominent aspects of the sanatorium movements and water represented the act of washing away the germs and the dirt. Water is predominant either in the forms of the pools, especially a very characteristic pool of Sureyakosha Sanatorium and the sea views of Heibelada Sanatorium, or we see it's demonstrated with sanitary wear, such as wash basins in almost every room. And the white wash and sometimes blue wash, as in Heibelada walls, gave the appearance of being spotlessly clean, which is a visual symbol of health and hygiene, like the white coats worn by the medical staff reassuring the patients. And of course, the black and white photography also consolidated this discourse. Finally, I want to talk about the furniture of the sanatorium movements, uh, which were to become part of the domestic interiors as icons of modernism. So much so, quoting Aubrey, the hygienic and machine-like designs were ridiculed as surgical, clinical, and hospital-like. So these furniture are solely functional with tubular steel prominence, which are easy to clean, covered with white cushions, sheets, plates, also encompassing the purity of the geometric forms. And as part of the modern movement in the early 20th century, the long chairs or the reclining chairs were also born as part of the modernist movement. And the modernist designers interpreted these using anthropometric data and new production techniques, they become icons of modernism. Unfortunately, for my argument, in the selected movie cases, I could not find a reclining chair, but the garden furniture of the sanator uh, Sureyakosha Sanatorium is noteworthy as they are very similar in structure and material and were actually used for silent cure in open air. Thank you for listening. We thank Deniz Avcı Hasanlı for this elaborate analysis of the portrayal specifically uh, on tuberculosis in Turkish films. You've watched many uh, movies with the same theme, Hocam. <laughs> this context is rather close to what we're experiencing at the global scale today as well. And the cure appears to be similar as well in terms of uh, interiors. Uh, thank you to all presenters once more who presented their detailed and rich works and for keeping to the time limits. You made my job much easier in that sense. This brings us to the lessons learned, questions and discussion part moderated by uh, Eivon Altan uh, Hoca. I leave the floor to you, Hoca. Thank you, Deniz Hoca. Uh, and thank you all presenters. The uh, presentations were really very, very uh, nice to listen. They opened up very interesting uh, discussions. Uh, I'm sure there may be questions, but uh, how, what is the system for getting questions? Uh, if there are any, could people write them on chat or question and answer? Uh, as uh, in the previous sessions, they were writing in the uh, chat part of the Okay, so uh, yes, Erdem says either way is fine. Okay, uh, if uh, there are any questions, uh, you can write on chat uh, and uh, or question and answer uh, parts. Um, I mean, I can, yes, Erdem, you are right. Uh, they can raise their hands. Uh, Burkayo Jam, yes, please. Uh, can we give the floor to Burkan? Uh, how shall we proceed? Yes, okay. Burkan or jump, please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we do. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Elvan Ojam. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, to the 4T committee and Dokomomo TR interior committee to make this session happen. 
because uh, I mean, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's very close to my, uh, you know, individual areas of research. Uh, I've got actually uh, two comments like questions. The first one is to for Selim. Uh, hello, Selim. Uh, Um, yes, okay. I well, think um, he can hear, but he could, cannot. Okay. Um, I think it's a kind of a coincidence that uh, I am uh, conducting an ongoing research on the transformation of bathroom space in the domestic interior, uh, which is very close to what Selim is doing now. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask Selim, is this an ongoing uh, thesis project or another research project? No, uh, it's not. A... Uh -huh. So, it's well, of... uh, in my uh, ongoing research, actually, uh, my initial findings are interesting. So I would like to share with you. So uh, we had better be in contact uh so i i think you are my facebook friend or i can you know send you an email uh to share some of my outcomes for this research because what you did was a kind of a discourse analysis and what i'm doing is a, a spatial planning analysis uh very in-depth analysis so we can somehow combine these two and do something together why not you know uh, yes, yes, so yes, that will yes, be yes, my concern. Thank you again. Uh, my second question will be to uh, the third uh, presenter, Deniz Avcı Hosanlı. Uh, Deniz Hocam, very interesting, uh, very enjoyable presentation. We mm -hmm. know all these sanatoriums, of course, from the Yeşilçam films. Um, my point will be about the, the film mm -hmm. itself uh, as a medium of representation because we know that uh, i mean the the film is a medium of representation and it's more uh, based on the uh the mindset of the script writer and the director uh, whatever they would like to represent in a way so we know that especially in the uh, early periods of uh, turkish republic health and hygiene was more than two concepts but they were like ideological, let's say, manifestations of the nation states, uh, both in domestic terms and in public terms. And, uh, but uh, in the films themselves, I wonder uh, how those spaces are, you know, how do you read their modes of representations? Uh, I mean, uh, the, for instance, I know Hali Trefi, uh, Hadi Trefi is a director who is not only telling the story with the visual, you know, with the filmic representation, but also trying to give a panorama uh, of the modern lifestyle and what's happening, what's changing uh, in the public. So uh, in the same manner, uh, what I, I mean, the general public, uh, let's say, opinion or the mindset about Yeshil Chan films is, are that the sanatoriums occur at the very last stages of a love affair between the main characters. So uh, in these terms, it becomes part of this melodramic uh, scenario. So if the directors do not have an additional message to give to the audience. So I wonder how you, uh, I mean, did you have the chance to talk with the uh, the filmmakers, or uh, not from the perspective of space, but from the filmmaking. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Burkay Hocam, for your comments uh, and questions. Uh, I will start with the last one. No, I couldn't uh, contact the filmmakers, but this is a very nice comment. I will surely, if I am to continue with this project, uh, I will surely be contacting them. Uh, as you said, uh, usually the presentation, the portrayal is about the melodramic uh, portrayal. So it's about the consequence of the lost loves or the heartbreaks. But I see that mo in the most of the films, tuberculosis, the disease itself, perhaps not the sanatoriums, but the diseases, um, it is portrayed 
as perhaps part of the social propaganda because we often see these hidden messages given by the doctors about the hygienic lifestyle and how to prevent these diseases. For example, as I mentioned, uh, by defining nutritious programs or by suggesting that they could go to a certain sanatorium. They give the names of the uh, buildings in, sometimes. Sometimes they don't, but they offer regions filled with pine trees and the mountainous regions, and they define a diet program. So, um, yeah, they are not perhaps focusing on the sanatoriums themselves, rather than offering that the patients go there, uh, but they, as part of the social propaganda, perhaps they are defining ways to fight with the disease uh, tuberculosis. So uh, I would, uh, I don't know if you have watched Kelebeyin Riyası, also we mm -hmm. see Hebele the sanatorium. Yes. So uh, I wonder, I mean, I see it more, uh, I mean, again, it's the, you know, <laughs> It's the, in the end of the heartbreak, but uh, mm -hmm. I found a more creative way of presenting the space. This is my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I watch the Dream of the Butterfly, but uh, my scope was the Yeshicha movies from 1950s to the 1970s. So, and uh, by the way, that film has been much studied, um, much has been written and documented. Uh, and analyzed about that film. So I uh, tried to leave it <laughs> within the out uh, of within the scope of this uh, presentation. But uh, I know that there are a lot of good scenes from that movie in terms of portraying the Hebirada Sanatorium. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... If there are uh, no more questions or comments, maybe uh, I can um, uh, ask <laughs> a question to all the presenters. Uh, indeed, this is a general comment about the historiographical approach. Here we talk about the key words of modern and hygiene, uh, an interior space, of course. And in studying the relationship of these three uh, concepts uh, indeed uh, in, in terms of uh, time frames uh, i would like to hear your opinions indeed um, all of the presentations seem to be starting the period from the beginning of the uh, republic from the 20s or 30s let's say and they cover sometime until 70s generally uh, I wonder why do you select such a frame of reference for your studies? Uh, and uh, I mean, if this is something uh, uh, consciously chosen and indeed uh, in these uh, decades, indeed, there are also differences in terms of uh, these concepts, interior design, modern, or maybe hygiene, I'm not very well informed about studies on uh, the issues of hygienic issues, but from uh, looking from the uh, architectural perspective, we see that there are changes, transformations from the 1920s, 30s to the 70s. So your, in your studies, how do you take this chronological issue, uh, uh, the transformation uh, in terms of the uh, relation between space and hygiene, uh, how do you see in terms of the transformation through the decades, all modern decades, uh, we may say, but uh, how do you uh, consider the uh, changes? Or do you think this is an important issue for your study, for your specific case cases? And also maybe I can add here, uh, Denise mentioned that uh, she is uh, studying, she chose to study uh, Yeshil Chan movies, so 50s and 70s as a concept, but indeed the buildings themselves are not uh, from that period. Uh, so uh, in terms of time frames, uh, there is a difference uh, in your uh, object of analysis as buildings and object of analysis as movies. So it seemed to me that uh, there is a such a in, such an issue of chronology or time frames deciding about uh, periodization 
uh, in all your cases, but maybe Dennis, you can start because yours seem to be more complex. Um, okay, my period of choice was determined by certain limitations. <laughs> Firstly, uh, the Yishicham, of course, the limitations of the Yishicham movies. Uh, when I scan the movies, uh, it's difficult to identify all the movies which portray these sanatoriums. So as soon as I decided that I was going to look at the sanatoriums and I was going to look at these sanatoriums via the Yishicham movies, I had to scan and identify the movies which portray them. So th that was my limitation. Uh, I suppose, in terms of that uh, chronological uh, limitation or complexity. Um, so I found that the movies which depicted the sanatoriums, perhaps because of the effects of the uh, after effects of the Second World War, uh, I identified that most of them were actually portrayed or depicted during the 1950s and the 1970s. And after the 1970s, there is a um, certain decline in the portrayal of them. So I can say that my time limitation was determined by the movies uh, themselves. But uh, I understand uh, how yeah. This is complex. <laughs> yeah, because the approach towards hygienic issues could, should have been different in 1930s mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to 50s, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, this differentiation, I believe, it seems to be an issue for your study. I might. For your future study, maybe, let yeah. us say, this is a start, of course. Uh, I uh, might that was, but so similarly, I think uh, for uh, Selim's case, for example, third, from 30s to 50s, uh, the approach towards the hygiene, the issue of hygiene changes. Or for Gulis as well, the building was demolished in late 70s, but uh, was the building taken uh, a, a similar role of hygienic uh, symbol, symbol in the 70s in comparison to the 30s? So uh, when you cover a longer period of analysis, this becomes an issue. I, would, I just wanted to ask your uh, the ideas about that. Thank you. Dennis, were you? Trying to add something? Uh, yes, Ajam. Uh, Kirazli Ayla and Suraya Pusha Sanatorium, uh, uh, they are also established uh, after 1945. So uh, their portrayal is in accordance with the movie uh, dates, actually. But uh, Heibeli the Sanatorium is, of course, an, uh, has an earlier date. But the new buildings at the Heibeli the Sanatorium, they were also built after 1945. So um, when I, I just thought of it, actually, because of your question, thank you for that, Evan Ojam. So uh, because the new structures and the uh, construction of Sureya Pasha and Kirazli Ayla, they are after 1945, and they are actually uh, almost in accordance with their portrayal uh, with the movies where Hey Belada is uh, a bit more uh, early. Thank you. I just wanted to add that. Okay. Gülis or Selim, would you like to comment on that issue or? Jam, thank you for your uh, contribution. Um, I uh, surely uh, think about the further um, further um, works. Um, I, I've chosen uh, because of the um, this buildings um, the built here, um, but um, still uh, as a hygienic. Uh, interior, uh, as you can see, as you can say, uh, still can be um, um, pair uh, within the years. Uh, so uh, I, I will definitely um, uh, reconsider this. Thank you, Oja. Thank you. Selim, do you want to add anything? No, thank you. Uh, and uh, I mean, we are running out of time maybe, but do we have a couple of more minutes or? Shall we continue for a couple of, sure. Yes, Erdem, thank you. And I also, uh, I mean, a point that Burkai Hoca mentioned, uh, the movies issue. Uh, I think it is interesting because it's a totally different 
uh, field of analysis for us. But uh, a similar issue is valid for uh, architect as well, because it's also another me medium than architecture, production of architecture itself as, as a built uh, uh, object, let's say. Uh, and as such, uh, again, this is an historiographical question maybe to Deniz and uh, Selim. Uh, here, uh, studying the case in another medium, which means studying the representation of hygienic space uh, in that medium, uh, is uh, why why do you choose that for in, in the first place, and wh what does it bring uh, to our uh, studies? Uh, what does it open as a new venue? Uh, would you like to comment on that a little bit? Um, perhaps I can go first. Yes, it's taken. Uh, I don't know if this is a satisfying answer, but I mean, when we look at the uh, uh, portrayal of these sanatoriums in Ishicham, there's always a romantic feeling to these spaces. I don't know if <laughs> this is this, um, this is a uh, strong answer, but uh, we can see how these spaces, these settings, these venues are actually um, experienced by the people and how they were using these spaces during in a specific time and in a specific place and in a specific condition. So rather than looking at these spaces as products of architecture, we are putting in the human factor who experiences these spaces and thus add gives that certain romantic emotional aspect to the space and which I think as interior designers, we uh, all feel that romantic connection with the spaces. Okay, thank you. The lived space <laughs> indeed, yes. Exactly. Uh, Selim, if you don't, yes, if you, Selim zor konuşuyor o yüzden onu konuşturamıyoruz. Sorry. Um, sesim gel. Uh, can evet. you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Um, uh, I think uh, the representation of hygiene or uh, representation of uh, the interior, maybe for my case, uh, I think it's only limited uh, with advertisements. I think uh, and representation is a a part of my uh, study actually, because I use so many uh, materials, uh, written or uh, visual. Uh, but uh, I think I should go further with uh, this uh, representation uh, of hygiene, uh, maybe. Um. Okay. <laughs> Sure, and uh, for Gulis, uh, I have a final uh, point to make. Uh, your case, Kızılay um, building, is indeed a, a, pub a symbol, a public symbol in a way, uh, an urban symbol. Uh, and as such, it is more like an image itself, it, uh, or uh, it, it is uh, if it's not only an image, it is related to the life uh, on the streets or on the square, uh, on in the garden in, in front. So, but you focus on the interior of the building. So how do you see that relation, uh, a public uh, image, a public symbol and its interior space? Would you like to comment a little bit on that? I find it very uh, exciting to uh, listen to such a case. So I would like to hear your uh, comments about that. Thank you, Ajam. Um, I was trying to uncover uh, an archive, uh, as you uh, can see. Um, I have a, a huge collection with um, different types of materials with uh, related the open air spaces and also interior spaces. Um, as my field of interest, I, I am um, firstly focused on the urban interior uh, side, uh, afterwards the inner. Um, I think uh, that may be caused uh, 
of uh, the demolition uh, is related with the uh, urban interior uh, uh, itself. Um, uh, how can I say uh, that? Uh, when, uh, when the park demolished and became uh, a car park, uh, it also affects, uh, affected uh, the interior because the interior space is uh, related with the urban uh, eventually. So um, I think uh, th they're all uh, feeding each other uh, in, uh, in the time period um we can uh, conclude uh, uh as the feeding uh, themselves with the um with the demolishing um it is all related <laughs> yes. thank you very much indeed Ed Erdem Mucha asks uh, how do you see the difference between representation of care by architecture versus seeing the representation of a representation in the movie itself. This is for Dennis, I guess. Can you, I think, Dennis, you can also see uh, the question in the text. And also, yes, please, uh, first uh, this one. Um, I believe I tried to explain it, but um, I will try again. So when we look at a building uh, in today's condition, what we see is the today's spirit. But when we look at the uh, a structure, a building and in the films, even though it's scripture, even though it's made up, we see that it's represented at a certain time in a certain condition within the scope of that time's characteristics. And this is why that we see the experience of that specific time and of that specific condition, uh, which I find valuable rather than simply looking at the empty photographs uh, of the buildings or today's condition, their current condition. But, but you're applying mostly to uh, devices of architectural description, not to movies. So yeah. I think there's a, there's a methodological problem involved in that. I mean, yeah. if you're talking about the representation of a space in a film, I think you should look at it through the lenses of film. First, seeing the film as a document is one thing. Mm -hmm. Documenting a space and seeing it through the document is one thing. And I think the way film and its peculiar ways representing that space is another thing. So I think we have two layers of, of uh, mediation here, which we both need to, I think, which we need to acknowledge together and not necessarily and, and i think you know I, I don't know maybe that's my understanding but i thought they were blending into each other kind of um without making a difference in your presentation so i thought that was that was something to be addressed thanks yeah thank you i am aware of that as for so thank you for that command so i tried two approaches i had to choose because of the time limits and the limits of this uh, presentation and of course uh, this once again this is an ongoing research I am aware of that issue so I either have to focus on the architectural characteristics with the script of the movie and explain them together but it was taking too much time so I had to make a choice uh, but I am aware of what you're saying and I was just thinking about that last night um, so thank you for your comments and uh, Adam you have raised your Hand or yeah, that was that was because of that that question. Um, but I think they were uh, both all very interesting uh, papers in that sense because um, when we say care, of course, we we might not only um, focus on hygiene. Uh, we might focus on care itself in the, in the sense that you know how are these people interacting with reference to being taken care of, right? Uh, both together. I mean, together with reference to space and with reference to the behavior of people in that space. And on the top of that, like how the, the director wants them to, to do that uh, in, in, in the way it appears on the movie screen. But the, I think um, Dokomomo's contribution has been really invaluable uh, to, the, uh, to the symposium. So we welcome uh, many more um, contributions. Thanks. Thank you. And from Burkai Hoca, a note to Selim. Uh, architecture drawings models are representations as well in which the intellectual or even ideological tendencies of the designers may be hidden within lines and graphics, of course. 
Okay. Uh, are there any other comments or questions? May I add one thing? Yes, sure. Uh, okay. Um, I was thinking about the word hygiene. Um, and um, if when we're going through archives that are in Turkish, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very difficult term to deal with. Like, for instance, I think Selim was looking for the word suhi, right? Um, I mean, if I were to translate it, I would look, look at hygienic, right? But then if I'm to translate hygiene, may I actually find the word in any source in Turkish? Like I can probably find hygiene today, but I don't know how it was like in the 1930s and 40s. And when that word enters and gets transliterated into Turkish is another problem, I think. Uh, when do we really prefer the word hygiene, right? Uh, to use the word hygiene is, is also, I think, a his, 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 historical problem and historiographical problem. So I think we might also need to, to address that uh, when, we're, when we're discussing that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I mean, if Selim would like to add anything, I don't know. No? Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, then thank you very much, Denis Ojan. Would you like um, to add anything? Uh, John Sudeir Manjol is raising. Yes, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, so thank you very much for all these great presentations. Um, I was particularly uh, excited because my current um, doctoral dissertation topic is early Republican. Uh, built environment and, and hygiene concerns and preventive medicine. So uh, that was an excellent uh, session for me. Thank you once again. Um, just one comment to maybe Selim Öztürk's um, uh, presentation. So, and also Erdem Hoca says the, the terminology about hygiene and suhi. Um, uh, the doctor's reports and, and public health advice literature um, adds a lot. I mean, it kind of completes the, the architect's writings about how living in Suhi um, hygienic environments. So there is a lot of uh, literature about how to live a hygienic life, how to live a Suhi life, so to avoid from diseases like booklets, um, health propaganda, uh, publications. It's, it really completes the, all these uh, contexts, I think. Um, and one question to uh, Deniz Avcı Hosanlı. So uh, thank you. Um, so I'm particularly only studying the early Republican sanatoria, especially Hebeliada, and now I'm looking at the, uh, the other ones in Istanbul, Erenköy, Valdeba, but um, I haven't seen the movie. So it was uh, great seeing that you have, analyzed all these architectural aspects in like um, in movies. Uh, and you also mentioned while answering a question um, about the emotional content and now these atmospheres and emotions all like hype topics of architectural history too. Um, maybe can you say more about it? Because in early Republican sanatorias, how they are represented in not in movies, of course, in 30s, but let's say in newspapers and journals like Yedigün, the sanatoria is represented like a place for, for hope, like in a very optimistic manner, because um, there is no cure for tuberculosis at that time, but they are like the best choice and for Hey, Belia, the people can be hospitalized after months or maybe years of waiting in the line. Uh, so this is like a place of ultimate hope or, or last hope for them. Um, so in the movies you analyze, is there, can you see that a common, um, common way that, that these buildings, these spaces are represented for like the public, what they offer, are they more like, because now there's a, there's a, a cure, the period you analyze the antibiotics they are like the last resort 
portrayed like last resort, a more melancholic, dark way, or still are they in a way offer an optimistic, optimistic, I don't know, I talk too much. So how, what do you say about this? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jansu, uh, Hojang, for your comments uh, and questions. Uh, for Heybilada, I can say that usually it's a very uh, melancholic and uh, fatal ending uh, for the case of Heybilada. For Krasli Ayla Sanatorium, I can say that it is represented at a place of hope where usually the patients who go there get well. And uh, for the Surya Pasha Sanatorium, usually, uh, usually the tone uh, of the film is I think once again, when they go to the Surya Pasha Sanatorium, they get well uh, in the end. But for the Hebila, the sake, uh, in all the movies, the characters who go, um, when they go there, they either die there or they're about to die, or they die because they leave the sanatorium in a rush. Um, yeah, I believe this is the case. So, but this also coincides with the fact that. Hey, Bilada was at the, uh, used at the period when there was not uh, no antibiotics, but Kirazliyayla and Sureya Pasha were used after uh, the inoculation and the resulting of the uh, good re uh, results of the uh, biomedicine. Mm, yeah, maybe it's related to that. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for all the contributions and comments and all the discussions. I think this is the end of our session, right? Uh, we are very happy to be part of this uh, nice, uh, very important, I guess, conference. Indeed, I was here presenting a paper, I think at the very first 40 conference, it, in, it was in uh, 2006, I guess, and um, it should have been as such. Uh, so I am very happy to be back, let's say, <laughs> to the symposia uh, and uh, with that uh, very productive group. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this uh, Docomo uh, interior group. Uh, and thank you for being with us today. Yes, and uh, before we close the session, we'd like to uh, remind you that we'll be starting at 2.30 tomorrow. Uh, and we have two panels uh, in the afternoon, ending with uh, the keynote of uh, Mohamed Garipur and Kathleen de Klerk, who are founders of the Epidemic Urbanism Initiative, and they've been working really hard throughout the epidemic. I don't know if you are familiar with their work. And they'll probably be mentioning uh, what they have been doing until now. I am uh, one of the European liaisons of that uh, that group, uh, and I think that will have a lot to do with the uh, the content of the symposium. Uh, but before we close, I'd like to thank uh, Elvan first for moderating uh, this uh, this uh, session, and it's a pleasure to see her with us. Uh, and I we would like to see it also independently of Dokomovo in the future, and we will be inviting you more often. Um, and uh, thank you, Dokomomo, Deniz, Zeynep, Güliz, uh, Deniz again, Umut, and Selim uh, for being with us uh, for this session. Uh, it was a great contribution uh, for the uh, discussion of the symposium. So hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow, and uh, we'll hope that you will enjoy the rest of the symposium. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good conference. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.